Hello, Facebook, Steve Woody here, and this is Midday Mastery, Online Mastery, and this is episode seven now. So, as you know, last week I did a whole series around sort of with the whiteboard behind me and we looked at some strategy. This week we're looking at more um, sort of theory level stuff. Uh, obviously, because I'm moving house at the moment, it's just been a little bit uh, up in the air. So, I'll be back in the studio as of Thursday. But today, being Valentine's Day, happy Valentine's Day everybody, I thought I would talk about loving your customers. Um, I had two client calls this morning and both of those client calls ended with uh, a shift in perspective. And it was really interesting because I'm seeing on my Facebook timeline at the moment, I'm seeing two things. Uh, I'm seeing, I'm not going to say if it, like what percentage it is, but there's like a group of people who are like, it's fucking Valentine's Day, it's the worst day of the year, I hate Valentine's Day, rah, rah, rah. These are the single people who have just split up with somebody who are in that camp, who don't like Valentine's Day. And then there's the other type of people on Facebook that I'm seeing who are like, it's Valentine's Day, it's such a lovely day, I'm so happy today. Look at my pictures of my wonderful life. And there's like those type of people. And so it's very diverse kind of day. There's a lot of, obviously, the commodity side of Valentine's Day. You know, we know it's just a day of the year, but we know it doesn't really mean anything, right? It's just a day. It's what you do throughout the year that makes the difference. Um, and I know that better than anyone right now because of, like, things that have gone on. Happy Valentine's Day, Lynette. Nice to see you. And so it's really interesting because, like, the difference between the two groups of people, right? Between the people that don't like Valentine's Day and the people who do like Valentine's Day is perspective. That's all it is. Like, right now, I should be fucking hating Valentine's Day. Like, I have every reason to hate it. Because, you know, when you look at two years ago, I flew out to America to meet Jamie. Then last year, we flew her over here to get our dream home. And so it's a really challenging time for me when I think about Valentine's Day. But rather than me looking at all of the pain and suffering I've got, I'm actually looking at, do you know what? What do I love? What do I love? I love what I'm doing. I love my clients, I love the work that I'm doing, I love my friends that I've got around me, I've got some mate, like, the, I can't tell you the support and the love and all of the messages, every single one of you, everybody who's commented on my Facebook feed, it's amazing, like the love of just the support from friends and strangers and the messages is amazing, absolutely amazing, and so there's a lot to be grateful for. So how does that relate to business? How can I look, flip that around to make an online mastery uh, session about it? Well, for me, it's like, it's perception. Two of the client calls I had this morning were because they were focusing on a specific thing. They had their outcome that they thought they needed to do. One was very, very focused on systems, and one was very, very focused on... They were actually overwhelmed because of all the problems. They were like, ah, oh, I've got click funnels and This is a conversation I have a lot of recently. I've got click funnels and webinar jam and lead pages, and I've got optimized press, and I've got WordPress, and I just don't know what to do, and I don't know what to use. And so I'm just like, well, let's just change your perspective. Let's just take you from, thanks for the hearts and likes, by the way, I'm loving them flying across the stream. Um, let's just change the perspective from, rather than what's overwhelming you and what's too much, what can you look at that is kind of going to push you in the direction that you need to go? And most of the time, that's really about what can you do for your clients? If you love your clients, because there's two types of people, right? There's a type of person who's like, I'm in business to make money. And like, I always talk about we need to make money, right? It's all, the business is all about making money. Don't get me wrong. That's, that is the focus. However, the way that you make the money, that's what counts. So you can make money by ripping people off. I could go and put a gun to a granny's head and I could rob her handbag. That's going to get me some money. But it's not ethical. It's not the right thing to do. There's different ways to make money. And if you can ethically and sustainably earn money, and the only way you can do that is to add value. If you're adding value to your clients, if you're solving their problems, they are going to love you. Now, it's not just about your clients loving you, because your clients could love you if, you if you do a good job for them. If you get results for your clients, like I guarantee, right, if I get more money in my clients' bank accounts, they love me. If I can take away the overwhelm for my clients, they love me. All right, so they can love me, that's great. But do I love them? You know, is it one of those, oh, I've got to talk to that client again, oh, I can't be bothered with this, I don't want to do it. Like, there's a difference. And so it's really about why are you doing what you're doing? If you're doing what you're doing just to earn money, then that's great. I, I appreciate that. I understand that. It's business, right? But if you love your clients, if you truly give a shit about your clients, it makes the job so much better. And also, you will deliver so much more value. And I, when I post things that are going on in my life and I have so many people commenting and supporting me, it's because people love me. 
And the reason they love me is because I love them. And so because I love everyone, because I just that's just who I am. I'm just, I, you know, I'm just, I just, I don't dislike or hate anybody. You know, there's people that I think are. You know, I have situations where I think, oh, that person's an idiot, or oh, sometimes I think I'm an idiot. You know, they're, those, they, they're situational. But overall, in the long term time of things, it's because I, I, I genuinely love people. You know, I think there's enough shit going on in the world that I don't want to add to that problem. I want it to be a happy, good place, and I want, especially in my environment and my model of the world, and so I want my clients to be happy. I want them to love me, and I want to love them. And so, again, it's about perspective. There's two types of people, right, on Valentine's Day. You've got the people who don't like Valentine's Day and you've got the people who do love Valentine's Day. It's perspective. So why you look at why you're doing what you're doing, and Lynette, you're absolutely right. It's back to purpose. Why do we do what we do? If you're doing it for money, then I get that. But I challenge you. I challenge you to consider if you're doing what you're doing because you love the people that you're helping, the money will come. I promise you the money will come. I am a living testament of this. I have spent years and years and years working for free, not having my systems in place, not doing things properly, helping, helping, helping. I've, all, I've been helping and helping and helping. That's all I've been doing. And now, now I get to sit here. I made 10 grand yesterday. I made 10,000 pounds yesterday in sales and I wasn't even on my laptop. I was moving house. I was going through one of the most challenging days of my life yesterday. And whilst that was happening at the exact same time, I have people, I was closing deals through my systems that I've got in place in my business. And the reason I was able to do that was because I sat down. I sat down with a gentleman. I, it, I'll tell you the story very, very quickly because I think it's relevant. Uh, the gentleman come to my house. And the reason he comes to my house is because I put a four-minute rant out last week on Facebook. I put a four-minute rant out talking about developers and how if you don't know what you need in your website, and you, if you want a website but you don't know what you need, then you're going to say, I need a website. And if the developer doesn't know what questions to ask, they're going to give you a website. So you've got what you've asked for. It's just not actually going to get you results. So I did a four-minute rant. As a result of that, somebody watched it, connected with me, and I said, come to my house. I said, look, I'm moving, but right now, because you're local, if you're, you come to my house, we'll have a cup of tea. So we come to my house. We sat down for about an hour. And the first thing I asked him when he came in through the door, he said, right, let's talk about websites. So I had a cup of tea, did the introduction thing, you know, said hello. He sat down and I said, right, show me your balance sheet. I said, I want to see your balance sheet. I said, I want to know how much money is coming into your business. Because um, here's the thing. If, you, if you're a business owner or you're running a business and I ask you for your balance sheet, you're going to say one of two things. One, I don't have one. Or two, here it is. Right, that's it. You either do or you don't have one. If you don't have a balance sheet, I know exactly where you are in your business. I know exactly where you are. Because if you don't know the numbers in your business, you don't have a business. It is as simple as that. You may be getting by on luck and you may be like winging it and you may be hoping. And that's what I did for years, by the way. But if you don't know your numbers, if you don't know your projections, if you don't know what's coming in and what's going out, if you don't have that financial side of it locked down, then you are, you're not in business, right? Or you're not in a sustainable business. So once you see the balance sheet, then you know, because I can look at the numbers and I can say, right. This is what my friend Derry does. This is what he taught me. He goes into a business and he looks at the numbers and says, you're going to go bankrupt on this date. Because he can see the patterns. He can see things. He reads the numbers. And it tells him a story. And so once I understand that, see, it's not about building a website. It's about knowing the business. Once you know the business, once you know the numbers, then you can build the websites and the systems to support those numbers, to bring in the people that you need to bring in. You know, How much money, does, how much money do you as a person need to earn a month? How much do your staff need to earn? How much does the business need to generate to cover its overheads and to pay the wages? How many people do you need to bring into the business to convert them at whatever you're selling to make that money? It's, it's maths. It's simple maths. And if you understand that concept, then that's the business that's taken care of. So now, now you've got that written down and you know that and you could adjust for it. Like, I check my balances once a week. I check, my, I check my stuff once a week now. On a Sunday night, I sit down. The first thing I do is I look at my finances. Once I've looked at my finances, I then create my content because I'm driven enough to know how I want to help people and I know my targets. Don't get me wrong. I'm a business person. I want my business to be successful. I want my clients' businesses to be successful. I want people to have money because I've been without money and I know what it's like and I've been homeless because I haven't had money and I don't want anybody else to be in that position. The reason I do what I do is because I want people to not have the stress at home, to not have the arguments around money. You know, I grew up in a family where people would argue around money and I, I, I've got, 
I've got experiences throughout a lot of my life where I've struggled with money because of the relationship that I've had with it. But money is not a bad thing. You need to get over this fear of selling and not wanting to, you know, earn money because money is fucking amazing when you have it and use it right. You can use money, you can, you can, you know, you can get homeless people off the street if you've got money. You can feed people that are starving if you've got money. You know, if you don't want the rainforest chopped down, then you can buy a land, a, a, an area of land if you've got the money, and you could plant trees and say you're not fucking chopping that down. If you've got money, you can do things. It's just the attachment of not having money, that's the fear that we have. And that's why we don't want to sell, because we don't want to come across as douchebags, we don't want to come across as, you know, we don't, we don't want to come across as a type of person that people don't like. We all want to be liked, we want to connect, we want to be loved. Right? And this is what Valentine's Day is all about, right? It's about sharing the love. And that's the thing though, it's not about commoditizing it on one day. It's not about, I'm going to create a product to make some money, one time offer. It's not about that. It's how do you build a sustainable and a long-term relationship? How can you build that community of people who love you and who you love? Because that's going to fulfill you. That's going to give you purpose. That's going to drive you. I never wanted to build websites. That was never my point. I, I did it because I needed money. And this was a way for me to create options in my life to do the things I want to do. Honestly, I don't know what I want to do with my life. I don't know what my life's purpose is. I don't know. All I know is I'm passionate about people not going through the same things I've been through. I don't want people to experience the same level of pain and suffering that I put myself through. And so if I can help people to not go through that, then that to me feels like a purpose. That feels like passion. I feel passion around that. That's why I'm doing this right now. Okay, it's to educate people that it doesn't have to be all shady, you know, black hat marketing tactics just to try and get money out of people. There is a lot, there's, there's more than enough money out there. There is so much money out there. It's just, you, you maybe just can't see it right now. Or you're not doing the right things because you're in the wrong mindset. You may be in scarcity, you may be in lack. Again, it's like Valentine's Day. You may be focusing on why you hate Valentine's Day. And I can tell you now, if you're going, I hate Valentine's Day, I hate Valentine's Day, Valentine's Day shit, love's crap, it doesn't exist. If you're focused and that's where your mindset is, then you're just going to attract that around you. You'll get a group of people that agree with you. You know, if you post a Facebook status saying, oh, I hate Valentine's Day, it's shit. You get a group of people that go, oh, no, man, no, oh, no, it's crap, oh, it's horrible. You've now got a community of people that are thinking the same as you. That's not going to help you. You know, that's, that's, that's unfortunately, and I'll give you an example. My mum has a condition called fibromyalgia. Right? And this condition that she has causes her to be in constant pain in her body. So she went to a support group and they would sit down once a week and everyone would talk about their pain and how much pain they were in. So if they're talking about pain and thinking about, about pain, all that's going through their head is the pain they're in, what do you think they're going to be thinking of all the time? Right? She was always in pain. However, when she pulled away from that support group and when she stopped going to it and she found new friends who focused on something completely different, now she's not in as much pain. Because she's not focused on it all the time. She's distracting herself. And it's important that I mention that because that's what this is about. You know, you can focus on not being loved and not loving people and how crap Valentine's Day is. But if you distract yourself from the shit that's going like, by the way, I'm doing this in my life. I'm distracting myself right now from the divorce that I'm going through and breaking up from my wife and all of the shit that's going on in my life and moving out of my house. I'm distracting myself from that by focusing on my business. That's my distraction. And that's why I'm having days like I had yesterday. I'm closing these clients because when the gentleman come over to my house and I sat down and we looked at his balance sheet and we went over his numbers, I said, what do you want? What's the outcome? And he told me. He told me exactly what his problems were. He told me exactly what was going wrong. He told me exactly where he wanted to be. And I was like, okay, this is a step-by-step -step plan that we can implement to make that happen. And then I give him a choice. I said, you can either go away and do it yourself. I've given you the knowledge. You can go and implement that or I can implement it for you. And it was at that point when he's like, you're doing it for me. And he went away and he had a fault. And then yesterday I had the email and he's like, yep, yeah, I'm done. I'm in. Let's go. I got that email. That was done. Closed nine grand's worth of sales. Yesterday, through one sale, just through that. All because I put a four minute rant out, connected with a guy who trusted me, who believed in me, who likes what I do because I give a shit. Because I care. Because I don't want him to go through the problems that he, you know, he's got a family. He's got a business. He's got staff. They've got families. He has over 180 staff in his company. They have families. You know, and this is one of the things I admire about Jamie so much is that she wasn't just an English teacher. She focused on the teachers that were working for her because they've got families and they've got kids. And she inspired me so much to give a shit about people because I do. And I've always given a shit about people. But I never looked after myself. 
That's why I've got a coach at the moment. I've got the most amazing woman who's teaching me self-love and who's teaching me how to look after myself because you can't give from a cup that's half empty, right? You can't give from something you don't have. So you have to look after yourself first. You have to be selfish. You have to look after yourself so you can create enough in yourself that you can then give to others. And that's what it's all about. So Valentine's Day is, yes, it's about focusing on love, but I don't just want this to be one day. Like, I don't just want you to, oh, I need to earn money. Let me just create an offer and put it out to the world and solve my problem. Yeah, All right, I'm doing that at the moment, but I'm not just creating an offer and putting it out there as a one-time thing. I'm creating a six-week program to take people through. You know, I'm going to take the next six weeks working through the people. And by the way, I'm, I'm pretty much done with that now. I'm, I'm happy. I've got enough people now that I can work with. I, this is really interesting. So we talk about self-love. See if you can understand this from my perception, right? Because this is how my mind works and this is where it's a bit crazy. I set myself a target and I said I was going to earn £100,000 this month. I have never done anything like this before in my life. I've seen people do it. Well, let me rephrase that. I've seen people talk about doing it, you know, posting their photoshopped bank statements and things like that online. And I'm like, oh, that seems nice. And so rather than just jumping into like, you know, their courses and their programs, you know, it's the people that say, I'm going to tell you how to make money Buy my program that tells you how to make money. I'm like, hold on a minute. The only way you made money was by telling me how to make money. Like they haven't made the money. It, you know, does, does that make sense? The people that are selling you something and the only way they can get it is by selling you something, haven't got it. Just see if that like lands for a minute, because there's a lot of people out there telling you how they can do something. They haven't done it themselves yet. Yet there are a few people who have. I reached out to a guy called Jason Harun, who does all the Facebook marketing for Mike Dillard, for Frank Kern, and we had a conversation. And he said, and I, 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 can, I can openly admit this, he said, I won't work with you. He said, right now, you're not in the right place. You need to have proven uh, converting Facebook ads before I will get involved. He said, it is not in my interest to work with you because it will take me three months to be able to get you to a place where you're turning. Hear me out, right? This guy does about eight million a month in Facebook ad revenue. And he said, it will take me three months to be able to see results from your campaigns. So this is one of the world's top experts in Facebook ads who's handing in massive accounts and doing millions a month in ad revenue. Even he says it takes three months to get results in Facebook ads because of the testing and the tweaking and the conversions and the funnels and the content and the messaging and all of that. So it takes time. And he said, I'm not going to charge you 20 grand a month for the next three months just to set everything up. You go and set it up, use my courses, come back to me and once it's working, we'll tweak it and we'll take you to the next level. That's the point I'm trying to get to. It's knowing where you are, knowing what you're doing, know why you're doing it. So I started looking at these experts, at the people who were getting the results. And I'm like, well, they're doing six, seven figures. And if they can do six, seven figures a month, I can. We're all human. We've all got 24 hours in a day. It's just how I leverage my time, right? So it's doing the little things. And that's what I'm doing. I'm doing the little things. I'm every, like, I am have a database, and it would be so easy for me to be able to go into my database and go email all. And I've done that. And if you're in my database, you'll know that. I've sent some emails out recently and I've just broadcasted to the list. However, the way that I've been closing people, the way that I've been selling to people, is I've been individually reaching out and connecting with them. And every single person in my email list, I am looking at them, I'm going through and I'm sending them an email specifically to, I'm writing each one out by hand. Right? There's thousands and thousands of people. It's going to take me ages, but it's a process. And I'm working out who's ready and who I can talk to and, and what's going on. In fact, I'll show you right now. I'm going to flip the screen around. I'm going to show you my screen. And I'm going to show you what I'm doing and how I'm doing it. And you can see it. Because I think it's important that you understand this. I think it's important that you see this. I have a process right now. I want to make, I'm just making sure that there's no customer information on here. Because I don't want to... Um, there's no email addresses or anything on here. No, nope, I'm good. So, okay. This is... Let me spin this around, ready? So this is my screen at the moment. This is, I'm using Active Campaign, and the reason that I've moved to Active Campaign is because when I was using Infusionsoft, it just wasn't as um, agile as I wanted it to be. I, I like having the ability to, um, to drag and drop. I'm a very visual person. So this is my initial contact. Anybody who comes into any of my opt-ins at any stage, although they're automated, they'll go into this list right, to contact. So these are the people that I still, I've got 3,740 people that I need to contact personally. 
I, every time I've contacted them, they go into this list here. And this is where I contacted them. And then when they reply, I add them into here. And then we're in contact. And then what happens, the reason that they're empty here is because once they go into this stage, I then move them into a new, another funnel. So this could be like play my website, build my website, promote my website, my ultimate bundle, book sales. And so they'll go into this stage. And then I can start working through and talking about who they are and where they are. I'm not going to, I've got some information now. I don't want you to see that because I try to be respectful. Um, so I, I take people through the process. Because I give a shit about people. If it was just about money for me, then I'd just broadcast all the time and that's all I would do. I would just, I would just be broadcasting to people being like, buy my shit, buy my shit, buy my shit. You know, but I'm not like that. I'm like, I want to build the relationships. I want to get into people's businesses. I want to find out what they're doing and how they're doing it. Because I care. Because I, I know I can make a difference. And so the thing for me, so I'm just going to move this. The thing for me really, in terms of the message I'm trying to drive home to you today and what I want you to understand, is that you need to give a shit. You need to love your clients and your customers. You have to care about them. Otherwise, why are you doing this? Now, what's the point? Because I can tell you now, right? If you're, if you're just doing this for money, then there's a chance you'll make money. And when you make money, and you have money, and you think that it will solve all the problems you've got, I can promise you now, one, because I've had money before and I've lost it, two, because I've, t I've talked to enough people now that have money. I know enough people that have made millions, that have made six, seven, I even know someone who's made eight figures and I can tell you now that every single, single one of them, everyone I've spoken to, has told you that money does not fix your problems. Money gives you new problems, all right? Better quality problems, yes. Because you don't want the problems of the scarcity, you don't want the problems of the lack, you don't want the problems of not paying your bills. Right? Those are bad problems that you want to get rid of, so money's good for that. But then you have different problems. Are your friends really your friends? Are they just with you for your money? Do people really care about you? Or are, are all of your right, relationships and connections with people, are they fake? Are people just with you because of your money? Then you have to worry about the tax man and how much he's going to take. And is it going to be taken away from you? Are you going to create a lifestyle like I did and buy a big house and get all these nice things and then it all goes and you lose it all? Because I can tell you now, when I got that house last year, it was amazing. Loved it. Best time of my life. I, like, planned my life out. That house meant so much to me because I've been homeless so many times. Because me and Jamie were going to build a life together. It was our future. It was our family. It was everything that I ever wanted. Unfortunately, it didn't last, so it got taken away. And because it got taken away, well, you know, I could have stayed there. I could have stayed in that house on my own. I could have found a way. I could have bought it now. I've got the money now. It's there. I could do it. But it's the, it's the emotions. It's the memories. It's the connection. It's the energy in that house. I was crying my eyes out when I left that house. Just like going around that house, closing all the doors, getting out of that room. It, it was so emotional for me because I'm leaving a part of my life behind. And so, it's not about the money. You can earn the money and get the house, but if you don't have those connections with people, if you don't build up those relationships with people, it's worthless. There's nothing around you know, money without the connection and the love from people. It's, it's, it's meaningless. And my life would not be as rich as it is. Like I am extremely wealthy because of the relationships I have with my friends. Friends that I connect with daily and friends that I speak to once a year. I have friends I haven't spoken to for 10 years and I know we can connect and just pick up the same conversation that we had 10 years ago. Because we have those deep and meaningful relationships and conversations. And, you know, yes, of course I fuck up and make mistakes. Everybody does. But the people that love you, like, I saw this amazing quote. It was about Valentine's Day. It was, um, um, oh, I can't remember what it was, but it was, they've been together for 11 years now. And it was such a great quote. It was, um, it's like being in love is not about, um, you know, it's not about the, the, the being in love. It's, it's the consistency. You know, it's, it's, oh yeah, what was it? Um, being in love is not about the perfect situation, but two imperfect people sticking it out. It was something along those lines. But it's, it is, it's about people working together through their problems. Getting to the stage where you're like, do you know what? I've got your back. I'm there no matter what. You're going through shit, I've got you. I'm going through shit, you've got me. When you can build that, and I'm not just talking about with a romantic partner in Valentine's Day, when you can do that for your clients, I have clients right now who are like, do you know what, I'm on a deadline and I know you're working for me, but you're going through some stuff, so just take some time out. Like, I have amazing clients who understand because I'm open and I, I communicate. All of my clients, they're happy to pay me. In fact, I've got some clients who, who are like, I need to pay you. you, I need to give you money, you're not charging me enough, and that, that doesn't make sense to me from my perspective, but when I have clients like Matt, who's over in Australia, you know, he was like, right, we need to pay you now. We need to give you some money. 
Like, I don't want you working for free. I want, I want you to charge me for this. That's the sort of level of clients I've attracted to me. And they're the sort of people I work with because they love me and I love them. It's a win-win. I'm part of them. You know, I'm part of their team. I'm part of their business. And so this isn't about me right now. This is about you. If you have a product, if you have a service, how can you love your customers? How can you love your clients? What can you do in your business right now to add extra value? And I'll give you an example and I'll leave you with this. I had, I'm going to go through the comments in a second. I had, when I used to do my hosting for my clients, this is an example. As a website developer, I would take on hosting clients because it was residual income. And I had about 200 clients and I used to host um, their websites on my own server. Now, I would always take, I would charge them a setup fee, all right? And it was something silly, it was like 25 pounds. So it was a 25 pound setup fee, plus the first month, which was like five pound a month. It was so cheap. But that 30 pounds, right? I would spend that. They would pay it to me and I would spend it. They would give me their billing address when they signed up for my hosting, so I would have their address. I would then go onto Groupon and I would buy a massage for them. It's like a 25, 30 pound massage in their area and I would send it to them. And I would say, I've got your website, you're in good hands, go and relax. Do you get that? Do you get that added level of service? Like, they had no idea that was coming. There was no expectation, there was no, um, you know, they, but that, in that moment, doing that for them, it was like, oh my God, wow. You know, it's like when I sign up a VIP client, when I used to, I don't do it anymore, unfortunately, and I should. This is stuff I should be doing. I'm, t I'm telling you what I should be doing, and I need to take this on board. I've just been caught up with stuff. But I used to build websites, and when the website was built, I would have an acrylic plaque made up, and that acrylic pack would have a picture of their homepage, and I would send it to them with a little mini bottle of champagne and a card saying, congratulations on your new website. Like, that's... That's the kind of stuff that really, when you start playing at that level, when you start thinking, how can I add extra value? How can I go above and beyond? You know, when I do my, when I do my consultations, and I I'm not doing any consultations at the moment, but when I do my consultations, the last one I did with a client, I took him to the Ritz. So we sat down for six hours in the Ritz, and we were drinking tea, and we had a big selection of sandwiches, and I spent about £100 on sandwiches, because it's the Ritz, right, and a cup of tea, and I think I posted the receipt on here a while ago because it was the point of people would be like, oh my God, why are you spending that money? Well, that client paid me a thousand pounds. Now, the reason we were in the Ritz was because it's the ambiance, it's the atmosphere, it's creative, it's a great experience. They love it, I love it, it was really good. It allows us to sit down and to work stuff out and we went through everything and we planned it all out and it was a good experience and it was a good day. We could have done it in Costa Coffee. I could have charged him £500 instead of 1000 and we could have done it in Costa Coffee and we could have worked it all out. But there was something about the environment. There's something about the experience. And people are happy to do it and I'm happy to do it and it's a win-win situation. So what are the things that you can do in your business? How can you maybe charge, if you have to, a little bit more? Because when I paid for the sandwiches and the tea and everything, really, the client's paying for it because I've built that into the cost of things because I'm a business, right? So... When I charge £1,000 out for a consultation, you have to understand, I'm not getting £1,000 for a consultation. You need to understand, that I'm a limited company. 25% of anything I earn is gone in tax. Taxman takes that before I even see it. Right? You're looking at another 5 to 10% in systems and other overheads and costs. And there's things like travel time. You know, it cost me 30 quid to get into London. Then there was 100 quid there. So by the time I break it down and I look at what I'm actually earning, I'm probably earning around... Five hundred pounds for the day, all right? Which is still a good wage. Even though I'm charging a thousand, I'm only earning five hundred, right? And not all of that is profit. That's not all wages. I don't get that. Some of it goes into the business. Some of it goes into R and D. Some of it goes into other things. You know, there's different places that it goes. So, this is why coming full circle, right back to the start of what I was talking about, you need to start by knowing your numbers. You need to know your business and you need to love your business. You need to love the numbers. You need to you need to look at it. I only need to live, for me to live, I need to work with two people a month. That's it. If I work with two people a month, I'm set. That's obtainable for me. That's easy for me. I can easily work with two clients a month. I closed two clients yesterday. Easy. And that wasn't even two clients that I needed to close. That was above and beyond. Like, well above and beyond. So it's like, how can you do it really, so it's really simple, so that you're not overwhelmed. Now, when I set myself them targets, like that 100,000, that's a huge target. 
And get this right, this is what I was talking about earlier, before I digressed, I set myself this target to earn £100,000 this month. At the moment, when I look at my pipeline and I look at what I've got in sales that have uh, closed on a handshake, where people have agreed that they're going to work with me, or the money's in the process of coming to me, there's just under £30,000 I've made this month. When I look at everything that's there. So this isn't money in my bank right now. But when I look at where I am and what I've agreed and what I've signed and contracts and some of it's monthly and some of it's ongoing, I've made, I've made almost 30 grand this month. 30,000 pounds. I've never ever made that sort of money before in my life. But I'm doing it. And so anybody, right, that's like, let me just for a moment, that's an annual salary. That's an annual salary that I've made in a month. And yet, here's the catch. I'm beating myself up because I missed my target of 100,000. Because I'm not on target to hit 100,000, I'm like, ah, I've missed my target. And I'm beating myself up about it, even though I've still had such an amazing month. This month is amazing. We're only halfway through it. And it's shaping up to be the most amazing month I've ever had. And yet, I'm beating myself up about it because I haven't hit my target. Because it was, so here's the question. Do you set yourself smaller, more realistic targets? Because if I'd set a target this month to earn five grand, then maybe I would have only made two. Maybe I would have hit my five grand. But I wouldn't have been driven. I wouldn't have had enough. There wouldn't have been enough um, fire in me to keep going. Especially like, trust me, right? It would be so easy for me right now to get some ice cream under the duvet, put Netflix on, and just say, my life's shit, it's terrible, Valentine's Day is fucking horrible. It would be so easy for me to do that right now. But I'm not. I'm sitting here and I'm saying, do you know what? Yes, I'm going through an extremely tough time in my personal life, but do you know what? I'm focused. I love my clients. My clients love me. I love what I do. I'm going to make a difference, and I'm going to make this to the point where it, it serves me. It supports me, and I support it, and I support my clients, and my clients support me, and it's a win-win situation. And I'm going to do that by adding value. So I want you to go away today, and I want you to take a moment and think about how can you add value? How can you just, right, right now, I want you to say to yourself, I love my clients. I love my, even if you don't have any clients, even if you hate your clients, I want you right now to say to yourself, I love my clients. I love my clients. I love them because, and I want you to find something. Find a reason to love what it is you do. And if you can do that, how can you add more value to them? And in the back end of that, because remember, you can't give from your cup unless it's full. Just look at your numbers. Understand your numbers and understand why you are where you are in your business, where you want to be in your business and how you're going to get there. It's really simple. I hope that's helped. I know this has been like a rah, but I just, I just wanted to get this out today because this whole week I want to really focus on a lot of these points because like, we are our business, right? If you're in business, then your business is a reflection of you as a person. How you show up in the world, your habits, your routines, your mindset, the way that you deal with things. That, your business is a reflection of that. So before your business can be successful, you in yourself have to be successful. You have to have a successful mindset. Mind, body, spirit, everything. Emotionally, physically, mentally. You have to have a successful mindset to have a successful business. And so I want you to take a step back and to look at that first. Especially today. And I'm loving the hearts, by the way. Jasmine, I'm going to hire you literally just to come on my Facebooks and just to give me hearts and loves. Like, I'm, I'm not going to lie. It's like, especially on Valentine's Day, I am feeling the love. But this is it, guys. That's, that's what it is. That's what, all, that's what it's all about today. Now, I know I went on for about half an hour. I'm going to leave it there. I'm just going to look through the comments quickly. I'm going to go right back to the beginning. Guys, wow. Oh, my God. I can't believe so many people are on here. Lisa, Brad. By the way, if you're type a comment, let me know. Are you still on the call right now? If you've been here since the start, if you've been here since the start, send me a message because um, you deserve a reward. Um, happy Valentine's Day, Lynette, Jasmine, do, 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 Paul, hello. Hey, Steve. Just thought I'd say... I always watch your videos and use them to improve my business. I love that. Thank you so much. I really, 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 really appreciate that. Um, and the reason I really appreciate that is because that's why I do this. You know, I could quite easily just sit here and rant. Like, this is what I could do. I could record this video, I could package it up as a course, and I could sell it. But, or not even sell it, I could give it away as an opt-in. But I wouldn't have this connection. I wouldn't have this back and forth. I wouldn't be able, like, the, the reason that Facebook, I love Facebook Live. It is my, it is the most, I love it. It's the favorite, it's my favorite platform. And the reason I love it so much is because of this. 
Like, look at all these loves and hearts. I love it. I love you guys. And reading the comments and interacting and knowing, knowing that what you've just said, that you watch my videos, so one, I'm not just some crazy man talking to myself, but two, the fact that you're using it to improve your business, I love that. Thank you. Because look, I can talk to you, but knowledge without application is worthless. And if you, can, if you listen to what I say, that's great. But if you don't go and apply this, and if you don't go and use it, it's, it's completely worthless. You need to go and apply it. Oh, wow, I can pin comments. I'm going to pin your comment. Okay, thank you very much. Um, now I'm going to try and read through the rest of these comments. Let's have a look through this. Uh, God, guys, right, there are so many comments on here. I'm just trying to catch up with them all. I want to make sure I capture everything while I'm here. Have you written a book on business finance? No, I haven't. I don't think I'm in a position to write a book on finance. Uh, maybe once I've you know, got myself out of finance. But this is one thing I will say about finance. To me, finance, there's two things, right? Money is money. Just money's money, that's it. Money is numbers. It's numbers on a screen. It's not even real anymore. You know, it's not like it's bearable against something. Like it used to be in the UK that it was like you looked on money and it said bearable against gold, right? Because it used to be worth something. It used to be like the, it was a promise. Prom, oh, I can't even say the word. A promiscuous. It's that note. <laughs> I can't remember what it's called. But it was like an IOU, right? Like the bank owed you. Now money is just numbers on a screen. That's it. And understand that because it's numbers on a screen, those numbers can be manipulated. You know, if more money needs to come into the economy, they just add a few more zeros, you know, they can just dilute the currency, they can, like, it's just, when you understand the concept of money, money, money just gives you options. That's all money is. It's like, so many people attach emotion to, to money. Like, they get emotional because of money, and it, it, they give money a bigger meaning than it really has. Like, when I'm 50 grand in debt, I don't look at me being 50 grand in debt. I look at, I have... Uh, I have £50,000 to pay back and here's a system that I put in place to do that. And by the way, just so that you know, right now, right now as it stands, at the start of this month, when I went into this month on the 1st of February, I was £53,000 in debt. Already, two weeks into this month, I have paid off 20% of that debt. 20% of that debt is now accounted for. All right, so that is the power of setting high targets and pushing and adding value and doing what you do. Because I'm getting, I'm not out of it yet, but I'm getting there, and I'm documenting this whole journey. I could have done this quietly. I could have done this behind the scenes. I could have spoken on stage. And I, by the way, I will be on stage talking about this. And so when you're watching me on stage talking about this, going, there was this one time when I was fifty grand in debt and I was going through a divorce, and you hear that story that I tell, you've fucking seen it. You've you've been part of it. You're living it with me. The reason I'm being so vulnerable and sharing it is because I know I'm helping others. I'm, going, I'm being flown out. So I'm being flown out to Serbia in April, actually going to speak at an event in Serbia. Uh, it's a conference out there. It's called INAT, I-N-A-T. So it's an innovation, um, technology innovation conference. I'll be, to, I'll be one of the keynote speakers and I'm delivering a workshop. They're paying for me to go out to Serbia. They're flying me out there. They're putting me up in a hotel. They're paying for me to go out there because I know my shit. Because I'm good at what I do and because I care about people and because I have an amazing story. All right? I'm not saying it from an arrogance point of view. I'm not saying it to be egotistical. I know I'm good at what I do. I love myself enough to care about what I do to help others. I sleep well at night because I'm ethical. I make mistakes. I let people down. I have a refund I'm processing at the moment because of a client who I, who I didn't deliver to. You know, I, Things still go wrong. But that client's not unhappy with me. In fact, he's on this Facebook Live. You know, And he understands. And it just wasn't meant to be. And it's cool. And I'm happy with that because I can't help everybody. And I, and I get that. But I, tr I truly believe that I'm doing what I'm doing for the right reason. Um, Jasmine, I'm doing what I do to help people to be happy and value them. And that's all you can do, darling. You're amazing. And I love what you're doing. And you just need to keep doing that. Back to purpose. That's it. Everyone's a people person. When you think about businesses, like, yeah, all right, we build a brand up. Yeah, we, we want to build a brand so people know about us. But people buy people. You know, you will always buy from someone you like. It's that whole used car salesman thing, right? You want to you connect with people. The thing is, you can connect with people to sell to them, or you can connect with people because you give a shit and you love them. When you can unconditionally love someone, whether they're your client or not, if you can help someone, like I spent an hour on a call with a potential client earlier. He's not a client. I spent an hour on the phone with him earlier because I knew that I could give him the information that he needs to go and do what he needs to do. And at the end of the call, I said, look, if you want me to implement and work with you on this, then we can. Here's the option, and here's what it is. And it's totally up to you. But if not, 
If we don't work together, then I'm confident I have given you everything that you need to do to go and do it. See, I don't, I don't worry about the money. I'm not focused on the money. I talk about it a lot at the moment because I'm trying to get people's mindsets into understanding. It's like, if you're in debt, the best thing you can do if you're in debt is to set up a direct debit, set up a monthly amount that you can pay, and then just forget about it. Automate the shit out of it and let it go. And then focus on doing what you do best. Focus on adding the value because the money will come in and then you can pay the debts off. If you sit there focusing on the debt, you'll get depressed, you'll get overwhelmed, you'll get frustrated. It will eat away at you. If you're sitting there and it's Valentine's Day and you're thinking about your ex and the person that you lost and you're thinking about the relationship that went wrong and you're thinking about all the shit times that you're going through at the moment and how you're going to be alone forever and that you're not with anyone, then you will feel like shit because you will condition and you will bring that stuff up for you. It's no different being in debt, being out of a relationship, you know, focusing on the bad side of Valentine's Day, focusing on not having any money. It's the same. It's not going to serve you. It's like, like the best one I ever heard is like worrying is like a rocking chair. It gives you something to do, but it's never going to get you anywhere. This is me rocking. I'm not in my padded room anymore. I'm just going to look through the last few of these questions and I'm going to let you guys go. You've all been amazing. You're right, Steve. You've got to love what you do. Yeah. When, here's the thing, right? You should love what you do. There's times when I'm doing things and I don't love it. There's times when I'm working with clients and I'm, I don't love it. And I'm like, oh, I don't want to be doing this today. or it's just. But I keep going because I know that I love the outcome. I love the end result. I love people sending me a message saying, do you know what, mate, you've made me money. Or oh, I managed to take, like, like Jeremy, right? Jeremy's one of the most amazing guys. When he sends me messages, and he's so excited like a puppy dog. He loves it. He's like, I just made a sale. I made some money in my business. And it's like, I love it because I feel his energy. And the ability for him to be able to take a photograph, upload it to his website, and people go on and buy that photo from his website, and he makes money out of his hobby. Because he he's not a businessman. He's got a job. But this is his hobby. You know, he's made a few thousand pounds out of his website on the side of what he's doing. That's, like, that's pocket money for him. And so I love that. So that's the outcome. I love the outcome. I don't necessarily love the process I'm going through day in, day out. You know, there's days it's good. There's days it's bad. It's like anything. It's like days I'm well, days I'm sick. Days I've got energy, days I haven't. Days I love things, days I don't. But I love the outcome. And it's the outcome that drives me forward. And so it's really, really important to love what you do Long term. Don't have to love what you're doing right now. You just have to love where you're going. Otherwise, we're spending time, wasting time just to get by. Exactly. And we don't want to do that. Like, that's not why we're here, you know. And I'm not saying nothing wrong with that. Look, people want a job. People want a job. I'm all for job security. I'm all for people working. Look, I'm not being funny, but when I go to KFC, I need someone to serve me my food. And I, I, People need jobs, you know. They're, they're, like, as long as you love what you're doing. I'll be honest with you. When I worked in McDonald's, when I was 16 and worked in McDonald's, that was probably the best job I ever had. I loved that job. I didn't have a care in the world. I didn't worry about anything. Any, I was fed three meals a day. All right, it was McDonald's, but I was still fed. Um, I had a great friend. We went out every weekend. All I needed to do was earn enough money to get pissed. That was it. That was my life. Not a care in the world. So people are where they are. And it's not about convincing them. It's not like you should be an entrepreneur or you need to do this or you need to do that. People need to do what they need to do. And we need to allow them to go on that journey. And sometimes people that are going through shit need to go through shit. If someone had pulled me out of, like, when I went through all of my trouble, when I went through all of my bad times, if someone had pulled me out of that, I wouldn't be here today with the mindset that I've got doing what I'm doing because I wouldn't have experienced the things. Sometimes people need to go through pain. Sometimes people need to go through hell. If you're single at the moment and you're not in a relationship and you're hating Valentine's Day, you're exactly where you need to be. Because you need that pain and you need that leverage and you need that suffering so that you can appreciate when things go well. So your next relationship, hopefully, won't fuck up. And that's not you. That maybe is the other side. It's two, you know, both, both sides of things. So it's really, really important that you understand. All right? It's not just about where you want everyone else to be. It's where you want to be and doing what's right for you and accepting that everyone else is on their journey. They're doing what's best for them. They're doing what's right for them. And if you can help them get further along their journey and to where they, they want to be, not where you want them to be, where they want to be. Your clients are on their journey and it is your job to get them to where they want to be, not where you want them to be. Got to understand that. Uh, hey, everyone. Hey, hey, hey. Hey, just looking through. Rather than think of it as being selfish, think of it being self-fulfilled in order... Yeah, I, and see, I love that, Stephanie. Ste for those of you that don't know, I've kept it quiet for a little while now. It's a bit hush-hush. Stephanie's my coach. Stephanie Burton is a self-love coach. Um, she works with women. 
quite masculine, so I'm not sure why she's working with me. Um, but no, she works with women because they're normally more emotionally open and available. And if anybody, I tell you now, if you're going through a period of your life right now because it's Valentine's Day, and for any reason you're feeling a little bit shitty, you're feeling a little bit down, connect with Stephanie. It's probably one of the best things you can do. In fact, she's doing a Facebook Live at 9 p.m. GMT tonight, and it's all about self-love. She works with me. We do three days a week. She works with me on coaching me over self-love, falling in love with myself, sorting myself out first. She is an absolutely amazing person. She's trained by Demartini. Um, and one of the very rare coaches that I found out there who I truly value and respect. Um, amazing woman. Highly recommend that you connect with Stephanie. Really, really worth doing, especially around this time of year. Any time of year. Um... My mum needs to link with you. Jasmine, yeah, absolutely. Connect with Stephanie, you should. Um, a kind of tick list to the cat list. Thank you for that. Hi. Uh, let, them, let them get into your head. Share your passion. Absolutely. Steve, mastering the art of selling. This is the thing, right? I mean, I, selling has always been a struggle for me. It's probably one of the hardest things for me to overcome. I don't dislike selling. I just dislike being associated with being a douchebag salesman. You know, I, I don't want that. So for me, it's really about how can I ethically sell sell to someone. And the way that I do it is because I add so much value. Like what I'm selling, if people don't take it, I'm kind of like, you're stupid. I don't say that. I mean, I'm saying that lightheartedly, but I'm like, it's a no-brainer, right? There's no, it's not like, oh, I'm trying to get you to, oh, I'm trying to just get a little bit more out of you. It's not like that. It's like what I'm offering is just absolute crazy value. And if people can't see it, that's absolutely fine. They're not ready. Because the people that can see it, take it. And I'm happy with that. It's a win-win. I'm happy, they're happy. I'm not a greedy man. I'm not trying to make millions right now. I'm just trying to get by and sort things out. And I'm just trying to help other people to do the same thing. You know, there's enough people out there that are doing what I'm doing. There's people out there that are making more noise than me. There's people out there that are making more money than me. There's people out there that are, that are not. It's just the way the world works, you know. People have to buy. The reason people work with me is because they believe in me. They like my vulnerability. They like my honesty. They like my openness. They like the way I am, the way I communicate, the way I connect. And so it's really about positioning yourself. There's enough people out there that do what I do. No one has to choose me. And I even say that. I say, look, go and speak to other people. Find out what's right for you. It's not even about the money. I had a fire six years ago and lost everything, but the emotions still remain. Wow, Lynette, that's amazing. I mean, it is. It's, it's what you connect. It's what you connect emotionally to the situation. And, and the thing is, as well, is we build a story up around it, right? And we do it in business all the time. We build a story up around selling and around our clients and around what's going on. And we kind of attach to that story. And if we can get to the point where we can detach from that story, if we get to the point where we can actually focus on like serving, like selfless serving, you know, where we're giving, like where we've got enough to give, we have to, we can only give what we've got, right? And you shouldn't give everything. I've learned this. If you give everything and you have nothing left, because people will always take from you. It's in their nature. People want things. People need things. And it's not because they're bad people, but it's just because people, you know, people are struggling. Like, if someone's drowning, they'll grab onto whatever they can. The problem is, if they grab onto you and you're not strong enough to swim, then they will pull you in and you'll drown with them. So the idea is you have to be strong enough. You have to have your roots down firm enough that you can pull them out. The only way you can do that is if you're full. Right? You have to be strong enough in yourself so that you can help other people. These are just things that I've learned from my life, and I, I, I'm hoping they help with you. Right, guys, I'm going to let you go. Uh, Luke, nice to see you on here. Human beings, I want two things primarily. Being loved for exactly who they are, warts and all. I haven't got any warts. And feeling special, significant, and important. It's true. Napoleon Bonatide once said, men and women will die for a piece of coloured ribbon. And just think about that for a moment. You know, People will go to war for a piece of coloured ribbon. It's a status. You know, like they're, they're, when you look at, and, and I learned this at um, Traffic and Conversion Summit, you consider a mum who has a child, right? A mum who has a child will go through their daily routine and they will do all of the things they do and it is completely unappreciated. It is a thankless job, but why do they do it? They do it because they know that there's an outcome, there's a purpose, there's, you know, there's something intuitive within them. And so if you're going to target a mum, What's the one thing that they're not getting a lot of the time? They may get it from their partner, but on some level, they're not getting the appreciation, especially not from the child, because the child can't. The child can't appreciate them. They don't understand. So if you're targeting mums and you can show them the appreciation and the love and you can connect with them in a way that adds value to them so they feel fulfilled, so they feel like they're super mum, and you can position them like that, 
then you're going to connect more with them. It's just it's knowing your audience. And it's knowing your audience better than they know themselves. If you know the people you're trying to help better than they know themselves, if you know their problems better than they do, if you know how to fix their problems better than they do and you can get them from A to B, game over. That's it. You've won. It's as simple as that. If you can articulate that and package it up, that's all it is. Rather aim high and miss than aim low and hit. Yeah, well, that's true, Luke, and I get that. But also, it's something, you know, being easy on yourself. Got to make sure I'm being easy on myself. Love my network of clients. Deal. Steve, salute you, good man. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, everyone. I really appreciate it. I'm going to let you go now. I've been going on for a little while now, and um, I just want to read the comments. Uh, thanks for looking out for me yesterday. Feedback needed. You are more than welcome. More than welcome. Rebecca, nice to see you. I've been since the start always... Always present for practical way of doing things you like. Right, well, oh, guys, I hope you've had an amazing day. Inbox you. Yeah, of course you can inbox me later. Please, like, send me a message. Anyone that wants to reach out to me, send me a PM. If you want to connect, I'll always make time. I'll always make time for people. Um, congratulations. Just joined in, Steve. Have a value on point. We'll watch it back from the beginning. Jacqueline, good luck. That's um, it's 50 minutes now. Um, keep bringing the live, Steve. You own it. Yep, 12 o'clock tomorrow. I will be back. Yesterday, I know yesterday was a little bit off topic with the move and everything. It was crazy. I'm sorry. It's just the way it was. Um, I'm not about being perfect. I'm just about getting it out of there. 8 20, right? Um, but look, there's consistency here in these lives. Right, guys, I'm going to let you go. Thank you so much. I'm reading through all these comments. There's so many comments here. I'm going to carry on reading them. Um, Chris, thanks for joining, buddy. Appreciate you. Um, I'll read through the comments. I'll reply to them all, and then I'm going to crack on. I've got stuff to do. But have an amazing day. Look, Valentine's Day, right? Reach out to someone. Um, whether you're in a relationship or not, it doesn't matter. I'm, I'm going on a date tonight. I'm taking out a beautiful lady on a date tonight. Um, I'm going to go and get dressed up. I'm going to go and have a shave. I'm going to go and look after myself. I'm going to go into Essex. I'm going to pick her up. I'm going to take her out. I don't know. I might go out to a restaurant or something. I'm trying to think somewhere nice to go. Um, but yeah, I'm spending Valentine's Day with my daughter. So we're going to do a daddy-daughter date tonight. And it is all about... Um, she's taking a friend with her. It's kind of like a double date. I'm actually taking two women out on a date tonight. I've got, I've got my daughter and I've got her friend or her cousin. So I'm actually taking two eight-year-olds out tonight um, for dinner. Because do you know what it is? It's all about love. It's not about the commercial side of things. It's not about the romantic side of things. It's just about love. Love yourself. Love your clients. Love your family. And look, if you feel like you've got no one to love, then send me a message. Love me, because I love you. And just like remember, if you can spread the love, and if you can do it in your business, and if you love what you're doing and why you're doing it, and people love you for it, then you're going to have a much better experience around work, life, and everything else. Have an amazing day. Enjoy Valentine's Day. I'll speak to you all soon. Take care. Bye-bye.